So another beautiful day at the cabin and today I'm showing you my solar setup that I have for my small cabin and this is potentially the smallest and easiest and most efficient system you can put together uh, actually on a budget. So this is all based on one single solar panel and it all starts with your consumption and if you've seen my small cabin there's not much to it. I have some electric lights, I have a small inverter 500 watts and I have a refrigerator, a high efficiency refrigerator which only draws 120 watt hours per day in the summertime. So my battery capacity is 1.6 kilowatt hours and this panel is a 300 watt panel. Actually the design capacity of this panel is 325 watts. It's a polycrystalline panel. We bought it used. It's probably about 10 years old and they lose about 1% of capacity every year. So let's say this is still putting out about 300 watts, maybe slightly less. Uh, my systems are designed for six hours of sun exposure. So behind me, this window gives me six hours of sun exposure. So 300 watts times six hours is 1.8 kilowatt hours. So my battery capacity of 1.6 is smaller than a six hour exposure of this panel to full sunlight. So I can recharge my system in less than six hours. And that's what my systems are based on. That's, that's one of the main rules that I follow uh, to, to come up you know, with, with a good panel to capacity ratio. So I already throttled back my fire here. Again, it's been maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. So this thing is putting out nice heat. Plus the cabin is still quite warm from yesterday. I'm gonna leave the door open because it's 39 degrees outside and it's still way below freezing here in my cabin. So let's take a look at the setup here. I hope there's enough light. So my setup is based on one single battery. And these are recycled Chevy Volt cells. Uh, they are made by LG Chem, uh, the N2.1 designation. And the chemistry is lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide. And they have a discharge rating of 1C. No, I'm sorry, they have a charge rating of 1C and a discharge rating of 3C. So they are recycled from an EV. So they are very powerful. And I took four of these, uh, which are actually 2P each. And I configured them in a 4S, 1P uh, setup. So this battery has a design capacity of 1.6 kilowatt hours. Uh, the maximum voltage is 16.4 volts. That's what I charge it to and the design max voltage is 16.8. So all this gets charged with a Victron MPPT charge controller. This is a 100 volt, 30 amp charge controller. The charge controller communicates wirelessly with the Victron temperature sensor that's on the back. You can see the blue light blinking here. Also the BMS is on the back, the battery management system. I believe this is a 60 amp, 60 or 80 amp battery management system right here. So this is one unit. So my cabin ran on this setup, 1.6 kilowatt hours charge controller. And then I have a Phoenix inverter here that handles up to 17 volts. That's important to know. And it's a 500 watt inverter and I only have an outlet on top. So you can plug in your, your laptops, you, you know, charge your devices, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, a couple of bus bars, fuses, you know, that kind of thing. The things you need out here. And I also made the system scalable. And you can see here's a bus bar. 
He is a 45 amp Anderson bus bar. So I can scale this system. So what I've done since, since I built several of these batteries, I hooked up a second battery. You can see this says number two on it. And actually this says number three on it. So I, I made several of these. And so this system is scalable. So instead of 1.6 kilowatt hours, I now have 3.2 kilowatt hours. And I have more batteries at home. I use them for a different solar system so I can plug in additional batteries for additional capacity. And each battery has its own BMS or battery management system. And I can scale it more and more. Now, if I deplete the system, it was designed with only one battery. And if I deplete it, it takes six hours to charge one battery. Now, of course, I have two of these batteries. I doubled my battery capacity, so it'll take two full days to, to recharge if, if, that's, uh, if that was ever to occur. As far as lights go, I want to show you this. So this is a DC charger. You know, it's just like a, a car charger, you know, for USB-A. Uh, the light is DC, and I run it on 13.8 volts because I have it, you know, bucked down from 16 volts to 13.8. Uh, my refrigerator here is an angle fridge. These are phenomenal fridges. It's an Australian company and it's extremely efficient. It's a 45 liter fridge. It's turned off right now because it's so cold in here. And this fridge in the summertime draws 120 watt hours. So let me take a look at my notes here. Uh, you probably have them on the screen right now. So the fridge draws 120 watt hours, so it runs for 13 days without any solar input. And this is with one battery. And since I have two batteries, I can run this fridge for 26 days, even if I unplug the solar panels and assume I have absolutely zero input uh, on the solar side. So the other thing I have is I have a ham radio in here, you know, for communication, emergency communication, or just communication with my ham radio friends. And again, it's all uh, managed by Anderson connectors here. So these are 45 amp uh, Andersons. You have additional lights you can plug in. The loft up there has lights where my little bar is. And uh, yeah, that's it. It's not much to it. I don't have, have any additional lights in here in my cabin. I have another inverter up here. I think this thing is even smaller. Yeah, this is a 375 watt inverter. This actually goes to my pavilion. And this system down here also powers my pavilion. So I have 16 volts running out. Let me see if you can see it from here to my pavilion underground. And then I run uh, an inverter, this 375 watt inverter in my pavilion, and I have AC and DC out in my pavilion so I can run lights, uh, refrigerators, uh, blenders, you know, wh whatever you want to run. Yeah, so this is probably the simplest and smallest solar system that's, in my mind, a, a full size solar system that you can actually run inverters off and has a design capacity that's usable and has a duty cycle of 24 seven. So these inverters can run 24 seven. Uh, they are meant for continuous duty cycle. And all this is capable of being completely sustainable with only one panel. And we bought a whole pallet of these panels. I don't know exactly how many we bought. I want to say 28 or 30 of them. And my friend has a bunch of these, and uh, I have uh, another one at home that I run my ham radio shack on. And it was a really good deal. I think we only paid, uh, shipping included, like $126 for these panels uh, a few years ago. And they've served us very well. So, one panel only. Is it feasible? Is it sustainable? It all depends on your energy needs, right? 
and so my larger cabin has larger energy needs and you've seen that system you know I don't have air conditioning in my small cabin I don't have a heat pump I don't have all the power outlets that you know my larger cabin has so the other thing I want to point out you can see that these panels are black these are monocrystalline panels the older panel I have for my small cabin it's a polycrystalline panel you know 10 years ago or so polycrystallines were cheaper and most people would use them because they are just cheaper and almost as good as these monocrystalline panels but panel design has come a long way and I'm super impressed with these LG 405s that I have here and again out of 810 watt design capacity I'm extracting 1100 1150 watts is not a problem for these panels so they've come a long way so that's my story for having the solar system with only one panel see you guys on the next one